What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter or TikTok at uh, Noah More Parties. And you can also find me at noahmoreparties.com where you can find all of my written work. Uh, I put out like three articles a week and all of my rankings for Dynasty Leagues, Debbie Leagues, Rookie Drafts, all running back stuff, noahmoreparties.com. But today's video is about a running back who I've been a fan of for about... I don't know, a year? A little longer than a year? I don't know. It doesn't really matter how long I've been a fan of him. I like this guy. I don't see a lot of buzz uh, from him in the rookie scouting community on Twitter really much at all, but he got a Senior Bowl invite. He was impressive at the Senior Bowl. You type in Evan Hull. His name is Evan Hull. <laughs> H-U-L-L, Senior Bowl on Twitter, and you get all sorts of stuff about, like, he was one of the most impressive players at the Senior Bowl, Senior Bowl standout, Senior Bowl offensive MVP, like, all that kind of stuff. Evan Hull was a stud at the Senior Bowl, and he is a running back from Northwestern. This was probably a very long and drawn-out intro, but that can be the intro. Let's talk about Evan Hull. <laughs> First things first with Evan Hull, he's probably going to have decent size for running back at the combine. He was listed at 5'11 and 210 pounds at Northwestern the last few years. And based on those, uh, on his historical measurements, as well as historical measurements for like all running backs drafted in the last like 15 years, I put together like a little model that projects heights and weights for guys at the combine, given their heights and weights as recruits throughout their college career. That was pretty successful last year. But anyway, based on that, I would expect that he's like 5'10 and a half and like 212 pounds at the combine. So not huge, but that's decent size for an NFL running back. He should be fast. He's got a personal record of 10.72 in the 100 meter dash, which is pretty good as a high school kid. That's right there with what like Brandon Cooks, Chuba Hubbard, Philip Dorsett, Rondale Moore, Sean Tucker, JJ Nelson, Diami Brown. All of those guys ran 10.72 or slower right in that area between like 10-7 and 11 flat, say, as high school kids. All those guys are very fast. I think there's a decent chance that Evan Hull runs sub 4-5, probably mid 4-4 at the combine at greater than 210 pounds, which would which would be pretty good at that weight and speed that gives him the same kind of like speeds. I don't care about speed score really, but lots of people do. So if you're a person who cares about speed score, that combination of size and speed puts him in virtually the same speed score that like Rashad White had last year. And people were all sorts of excited about Rashad White. Evan Hole is, has similar size and probably has similar speed to what Rashad White has. And he's also, he looks like an athlete on the field. The way he moves, if you just saw a silhouette, he kind of looks like Saquon Barkley on the field with like his, the way and the style in which he runs and moves his arms. He kind of leans into his cuts, you know, kind of turning north-south on the sideline and the way that like a motorcycle does, <laughs> like when they race them, you know? And he cuts like Saquon too. Like he takes these gather steps and then kind of like teleports sideways. It's strange, but he's a good athlete. Um, I think he's going to be fast at the combine and as a runner he was pretty impressive during his career at Northwestern he's a four-year guy um, his box adjusted efficiency rating which basically looks at given the box counts that you're carrying the ball against and relative to your teammates how efficient are you on a per carry basis and he had a box adjusted efficiency rating for his career of 132 percent which basically means the average carry for Evan Hull is worth 30 percent more than the average carry for all other guys at Northwestern during his time there. So that's pretty good. That's in the 81st percentile among guys who eventually get drafted into the NFL. And you can kind of conceptualize that with his his relative yards per carry, which is 0.8 higher than what the other guys at Northwestern had. So he averaged 0.8 yards per carry greater than his teammates in college while facing defensive fronts that were 0.14 men in the box heavier than what the other guys at Northwestern were seeing, which doesn't really, that's hard to wrap your head around, but that's a 74th percentile like discrepancy. He was running against heavy box counts relative to what his teammates were seeing and still outperforming them by nearly a yard per carry. And his teammates, and like you think Northwestern, okay, that's a shitty football school. They're in the big 10 power five conference. Yes, but they're never good. True, but the guys that, that Evan Hull was playing with at Northwestern collectively averaged just over three stars as high school recruits, which isn't anything incredible. That's in the 44th percentile among teammates of guys who go on to be drafted. It's it's not like they're uniquely awful. He wasn't 
he didn't play at Bowling Green. He played at Northwestern. Evan Hull averaged 0.8 yards per carry greater than three-star teammates while seeing box counts that were 0.14 defenders heavier than they saw, okay? Kendra Miller averaged 0.84 yards per carry, greater than teammates with 2.77 stars on average, while seeing box counts that were 0.07 defenders lighter than what his teammates saw. So Kendra Miller was basically just as efficient relative to his teammates as Evan Hull was, but against relative to worse teammates in, in college and with an easier path to that efficiency, given the lighter defensive fronts he was facing. Zach Charbonnet, in a similar boat, 0.66 yards per carry greater than his teammates. Those teammates averaged 2.54 stars as high school recruits, and uh, the average box count that Charbonnet saw was 0.03 defenders higher uh, than what the other guys at, at UCLA and Michigan saw. Izzy Abanacanda, sexy sleeper, lots of people like him in this class. 1.04 yards per carry greater than his teammates, pretty good. Uh, those teammates, 3.02 stars as high school recruits. Evan Holes were 3.01. But Izzy Abanacanda saw lighter defensive fronts than what his teammates saw. Same thing with Chase Brown, 0.81 yards per carry, greater than his teammates. Those teammates, 3.31 stars, pretty good. His box counts, 0.15 defenders lighter on average than what uh, his teammates saw. That's the same degree as Evan Hull had, but in negative. And then Sean Tucker, Averaged fewer yards per carry, 0.04 fewer yards per carry for his career than the other guys at Syracuse. Those other guys at Syracuse averaged 2.77 stars as high school recruits, and the box counts that he faced relative to them is essentially equivalent to Evan Hull, but a little bit less. All of that to say, Evan Hull was impressive relative to solid teammates with the disadvantage of having to run against heavy boxes, and his performance in that area is just as, if not more, impressive than the same situation for a lot of other guys in this class, including Kendra Miller, like every guy I named, Kendra Miller, Charbonnet, Izzy Abanacana, Chase Brown, Sean Tucker, all of those guys are getting hype in this class. Some of them is like the RB3. So Evan Hull was just as impressive as a runner in several contexts as a lot of the best running backs in this class. He was also decent in the open field, converted 31% of his 10-yard attempts into runs of 20 yards or more. This is in the 51st percentile, so just above average. And he broke a decent amount of tackles, 0.24 missed tackles force per attempt per pro football focus. That's in the 66th percentile. So good tackle breaker, decent open field runner, good size, fast, efficient, solid, like good. Um, the only bad thing about his rushing efficiency profile is his relative success rate, which looks at, given the down and distance situations he's carrying the ball in, relative to his teammates, given the box counts he's carrying into, how often is he succeeding on his carries, like on a per carry basis? So it's not a per carry average, it's a rate stat. How often is he, get, is he getting a requisite amount of yards given down a distance? He was doing that less often than his teammates at Northwestern. Negative 0.4% relative success rate. That's in the 29th percentile. So not good. For reference, however, that is around the same as like Izzy Abanacanda, Kenny McIntosh, Kendra Miller, Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs is much lower than that. So this isn't like a unique flaw in this running back class relative to a lot of running backs, but it is a flaw. We'd like him to create positive outcomes on his carries more often than his teammates did, and he did not, and that's often a sign of unreliable efficiency. If Evan Hull is incapable of producing consistently relative to what his teammates are doing, why should we have confidence in him to succeed in the NFL? That's a that's a sweeping generalization. I'm not saying and every player with this feature of their profile is doomed for failure, and I don't think Evan Hull is, but I think that it's often like the canary in the coal mine for like, oh, this guy was efficient, but maybe not in a way that's easily translatable to the NFL. That's that's often the case. And it could be the case with Evan Hull. But I don't expect Evan Hull to like make it in the NFL on the virtue of his ability as a runner. Where I think he'll make it in the NFL, where he has his best shot, is his ability as a receiver. So everything you just heard was the intro to this video. This video is about Evan Hull as a receiver because he's nice. And in this class, there are like four other guys that are widely considered high level, like near elite pass catchers. There's Jameer Gibbs, dude's getting Alvin Kamara comps as a pass catcher and they are justified. They're not justified as a runner, but they are justified as a receiver. He is incredible. There's Deuce Vaughn, who's very small, but is getting like Darren Sproles comps. They're justified. There's Kenny McIntosh, who's like 6'1", 210. He's kind of like a Kenyon Drake, Tony Pollard type guy. He's a legit pass catcher who is, he's the all-time leading 
receiver among Georgia running backs. That's a school that had DeAndre Swift, Todd Gurley, Sony Michelle, James Cook. Kenny McIntosh finished finished his career with more receptions and receiving yards than anyone in Georgia history. He's legit as a pass catcher, at least. And then Bijan Robinson. We know all about him. He's a good downfield pass catcher, um, used up the seam, used on wheel route. Like he he can line up in the slot. And and those four absolutely deserve to be talked about as elite pass catchers. My assertion is that Evan Hole belongs right there with them, and nobody talks about him like it like like he is. Evan Hole posted the highest single season receptions total of any running back in this class. He had 55 last season. Deuce Vaughn is second in that category. He had 49 in 2021. Evan Hull's 55 receptions last year is higher than the career receptions totals for nine running backs who were invited to the combine this year. Lots of high-end guys didn't catch as many passes in their career as Evan Hull ca- caught last season. Uh, he posted the second highest single season target share mark of any running back in this class. He had 16.8% of Northwestern's targets in 2022 went to Evan Hull. Deuce Vaughn is first in that area. He had 21% in 2021, but Evan Hull's target share was the highest in the entire country last season, like ridiculously high. Uh, he averaged more receptions per game for his entire career than all but two running backs in this class. That's Shamir Gibbs, and that's Deuce Vaughn. Like, Evan Hull's not just a one-year wonder who exploded as a senior. He had 33 receptions, and I believe also 1,000 rushing yards as a junior. He had a game with like 125 or 200 rushing yards, like four touchdowns, I think, as a freshman. Like, he's he's been flashing early. He was productive as a receiver throughout his career, especially in the last two seasons. And also just for fun, Evan Hull's career high in receiving yards in a single game is 88 yards higher than the next best for any running back in this class. He put up 14 receptions, 213 yards, and a touchdown against Duke last season. The next closest in receiving yards in a single game is Jameer Gibbs with 125 against Pitt in 2021. Like, not even close. Evan Hull was the only running back in the country with a 200-yard receiving game last season. And he's not just a volume guy. Like, target share for the speed score zealots, they're target share zealots too. They love that. So, size, speed, pass catching ability. Evan Hull is going to have all three of those things. At least I think. We'll see in a couple days of the combine. But if he has those few things... The, the spreadsheet versions are going to jump on board. But it's not just volume. Target share, receptions totals can sometimes be misleading, but Evan Hole has like legitimate pass catching skills. His route diversity is in the 92nd percentile. I explained this, I think, on a Sean Tucker video with Skittles. When, when I say route diversity, like he's... He's, he runs a lot of routes often. Like, he's not just spamming, you know, swing passes over and over and catching things in the flat. Like, he, he runs... A, a very diverse and varied array of types of routes. He lined up in the slot 17% of the time. That's an 84th percentile mark. Like he was running a lot of routes, being moved around the formation a lot. And versatility in those areas is reflective of skill in a way that volume numbers are not. Like if, if you are incapable of lining up in the slot and beating a linebacker on a slant over the middle, your coach is just not going to let you do that. He's not going to put you in that position. If you cannot come out of the backfield and shake somebody and while breaking, you know, on an out route and catch the ball cleanly, your coach is just not going to put you in a position to run that route. And the guy, there are lots of guys who just simply never run those types of routes. Evan Hull did run those types of routes because he can do them. The volume numbers are nice, but you could catch 55 screens. That's not what Evan Hull was doing though. So very diverse, very versatile route runner. And that matters for receiving production and it matters for fantasy success. If your ability to run like a diverse route tree didn't matter at all, if it was like, let's say it's like knitting. Knitting, the ability to knit is is not, doesn't matter for NFL running backs at all, obviously. There's no knitting on the, <laughs> on the football field. And so if you look at like these running backs are in the 75th percentile of knitting among NFL running backs. They're, they're better at knitting than 75% of running backs are. How well represented are the elite knitters among like running backs who get targeted a lot in the passing game? If these guys are the top 25% of knitters, you'd probably expect them to represent 25% of the high volume receiving backs in the league because knitting doesn't matter and there's no reason for it to represent any more or less of the high level receiving back population than it does of the population overall. So guys who are in the top 25% of knitters should represent approximately 25% 
of any subgroup of running backs you put together. That's not true of high diversity route runners. Guys in the top 25% of route diversity in the NFL represent 49% of running backs who have earned at least 65 targets in a season, which is approx- which is the average of what RB1 producers in fantasy earn in a season. So the average RB1 earns 65 targets in a season. The top 25% of running backs in route diversity, one quarter of the population, earns 50% of the 65 target seasons among running backs. It, it, it matters. It, if it didn't matter, those 25 running backs would represent approximately 25% of high volume receiving running backs, but they represent twice that amount. And that same trend is true when you not looking at 65 target running backs. If you look at just RB1s, so Nick Chubb counts, even though he's not a 65, you know, all RB1s, 75th percentile route diversity guys represent 31.5% of RB1 level producers in the last, what, six years, seven years, since 2016. So that's six and a half percent more of them than we would expect. So either way you slice it, whether you just care about fantasy production or whether you are looking at which pass catching skill sets literally translate and matter in the NFL. Route diversity absolutely matters and Evan Hole checks that box, but it's not enough to just run diverse routes. Like you have to be able to command targets and get open on those routes. Something that Evan Hole also does. I have another metric called route adjusted target earnings, which is a terrible name, but I shorten it to rate, which sounds a little better. His rate, which basically means given his route tree, And given how often all running backs are targeted on a per route basis on the routes that he's running, how many more or fewer targets is he earning on his routes than would be expected of an average player? And Evan Hull, given the routes that he runs, is hauling in 29% more targets than would be expected for an average running back. That's in the 71st percentile. His lowest mark in his career in that metric was 125%, so 25% more than an average running back, which means guys like Jameer Gibbs, Tajay Spears, Devon A-Chain, all of whom were around, were between 97% and 104% in that metric last season. So all right around the 100% mark, which means they were earning targets on their routes basically exactly at an average rate relative to all college running backs. For every four targets that Jameer Gibbs earned last season, Evan Hull earned five on a per route basis. That's pretty impressive. And if you just look at advanced routes, so if we ignore things like screens, if we ignore if we ignore swing passes and just like check downs and screens basically, where you're not getting open, you're available in the flat and either your quarterback needs to throw it to you or he doesn't, but it's not like you're beating a corner to get open on a screen. You're just you're just there, and if it happens, it happens. So ignoring those types of routes, just advanced routes, wheel routes, angle routes, outs, digs, slants, all sort of, you know, things that require actual route running ability. Evan Hole's rate mark on those routes is 116%, which is in the 62nd percentile. So he's being targeted even on advanced routes, 16% more often than we would expect of running backs nationwide. Deuce Vaughn, Kenny McIntosh, Jameer Gibbs, all below 100%, between 96 and 99% in that metric last season. I don't think that means they're bad, but as a point of comparison, that means for every seven targets that they earned last season on a per route basis, Evan Hull earned eight. So he's running a very diverse route tree. He's being moved all around the formation. He's being targeted at a very high rate on a per route basis, even higher on a per route basis than many of the like elite receiving backs in this class. And that's basically all I have for this video. He is a top level receiver. He's got good size. He's probably fast. Uh, he was an efficient runner in college. Like, I, I don't know what else we want from this guy. I don't know. That's all I have. Evan Hull's good. You should care about him. He's one of my favorite under the radar guys in this class. Anyway, have a great end of your week, and I'll see you on Saturday. Peace.